Oh. Hey! Hello? I'm not playing Pocket Frogs right now. I was checking my tweet. I did just show Space my frogs, though. And Connor. Hello, everybody. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Animal Quest. Yeehaw. She has a lot. All right, that's not a lot. That's not a lot, trust. Just wait till tomorrow. Um, Guys, welcome to Rat Animal Quest. How you doing? I graduated. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh. I didn't spend money. Good. Rat jam. Good. Rat ready. Big. Big. Good. Okay. Wicked. Um, welcome to Animal Quest. I don't think there is. Is there anybody here who doesn't know what we're doing today? By chance? Any lurkers that don't know what's going on? I don't think that there are. Me. Me smile. Me smile. A first time chatter just type. <gasps> this is my first animal quest? Really? Really? Tell us about rats. Oh, you want to know about rats? Oh. <laughs> I can I can talk to you about rats. Should I pretend I don't know what's going on? Let me tell you anyway. How about that? We chilling with rats? We are. Um guys, Animal Quest is a series that I do on this channel where I spend a lot of time <laughs> doing research. I make a little presentation and then I spotlight one of the um, species that we have here at Alveus. Um, so sometimes that's a couple ambassadors. Sometimes that's one ambassador. Um, we've done, what episode is this? Seventeen. We've done 17 episodes now of Animal Quest. Very cool. That's a lot, actually. Um, will there be a test? There is a little, it's, there's a little, it's not a quiz. It's, uh, there are polls. Vic, thank you. Um, Death Grape, thank you. Um, so yeah, there, there are polls in this presentation, but today is all about our rats. We have a couple rats. We're going to go through our rats. You guys are going to meet them. We're going to talk about threats to rats. We're going to talk about oh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, um, and then we'll do a Q and A at the end. So, if you guys have any questions, you can do hashtag ask followed by your question, and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. You can you can ask them throughout too, if you want. That is fine. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Are they here with us? Oh, they're here. The rats are here. Check this video. Uh, can you point the camera up? Um, here's this video made by Max to introduce our two rat friends. I don't think there's sound on it. Unless I just, can y'all hear that? Can I have sound? They were donated to Maya and are now ambassadors for Alveus. You'd think, Max, you know what? You'd think after making this many freaking- So we rescued Chip and Nilla, Videos who <laughs> were bred as feeder rats for reptiles. Can you come up? That's so nice. Look at so the reason we have the rats is to teach people about rodenticide use and how it affects other wildlife. Because when you poison a rat, there's a, a thing called bioaccumulation. Basically what that means is that, right, bit my nail, rat poison stays, stays in that rat, and then whatever eats the rat, whether it's an owl or a vulture or whatever, also eats that rat and then also gets poisoned and dies. So a lot of people don't realize that about rodenticides. So that's Chips Ahoy, and the other rat in here is Nilla Wafer. What do you think? Oh, fast. You're very fast. I don't know why they like my nails so much. 
And not my nails. <laughs> it's because they're long. <laughs> she thinks it's like a nut or something. Please. Wrestling. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh my, oh my god. Max, what a good video! What a good video! You guys want to meet them? You want to meet our stars? Cause they're here. Sonny, you can do hashtag ask followed by that question, and then I'll answer it at the end. I can answer it like generally now. Bioaccumulations with us with one individual. Biomagnification as across species. Here they are, people. They're in there. <gasps> Do you see them? They're moving. Who is coming out first? We have... Chips. There's a blankie in there. Chips. <laughs> She's in here. Oh, I see chips a whole <gasps> Nilla wafer. Everybody, this is Nilla Wafer. Here she is. Hold on, I'll put the camera down a little so you can see them. Oh, there she goes. I don't hear anything. So Nilla Wafer's out. Oh, she's back in. Chips Ahoy is in there as well. These were both, like I said in the video, these were both feeder rats. Um, whoa. These were both, were both feeder rats. Um, and now live at Alveus. Uh, feeder rats as in like for snake food. First time on the table. They've been on this table one other time. Nilla Wafer. cute. Oh, what are their ages? Mm hmm. When do we get the rats? I don't know. They're like a year or something. Less than a year. They're less than a year. There's some static. I don't know if it's just a cord thing. Why is this happening? All right, well, we'll let Chips decide if she wants to come out. I'm. You guys can hear that, right? Do you not hear that? Hmm. Hmm. Stand by. Okay. All right. We're going to leave the crate here. They will come out as they please. Um, oh, actually, space is still messing with sound. I do need sound. Later. I can ask some of your questions right now. Are they related or a couple? They may be related. They're both girls. Why are rats shy? Because they're prey animals. Um, they don't hunt things. They run from things. So they're always cautious. You know, they're... Trying to take cover. Do they bite? These ones have not bit us, really. Except for, like, nibbling, thinking that there's a 
treat. Your hair's on the mic? That's not the problem. And no, it's not. That is a problem, though. <laughs> um, should I switch mics? Hold on. Thanks. Hold. Let's see if that does any better. Um, do they get free time to run here and there out of the cage? They get let out every day. Yeah, in the nut house. They do. Do their tails fall off if you grab it? No, they don't. Lizards, yes, not rats. Do they know any tricks? Um, they do know a few that, that Kayla and Ella have done with them. Um, they spin, they scoop, um, they kennel, they have a little recall. How did these rats not become snake food in the end? How did they escape their fate? Uh, I asked a snake breeder if I could buy some live feeders, or if I could have some live, I didn't buy them, she, she knew what it was for. And she was like, sure. She gave them to us. Why do wild rats have diseases? We're gonna talk about rats and human illness in a little bit. Is there a logistics reason that rats and chins miss out on so many collabs? Um, mostly because it's just they're harder to interact with because of the way their cages are set up. And with, because they get let out in the studio every day, if we take them out and they try to interact with someone, chances are they're just going to jump to the floor and run away. And then, like, animal care has to crate them again and, like, put them away. So it just never really makes sense. Are they shoulder trained? No. What's the difference between a mouse and a rat? I have a whole slide about that in here. Uh, the big one is that mice are way smaller. <gasps> Cute. It's boring. <laughs> oh, a mouse. That's the difference. They look very different. Hi. What do you think? Beep, beep, beep. What is the average lifespan of a rat? What's your guess for that? Do you guys have guesses? Space, if it's really, if you can't figure it out, I just, fuck it. Oh, a lot of you know, yeah, two years. Yeah, two to three years. It's really sad. It's like really short. Uh, it's, pet, rats can make great pets. These domestic rats are great pets. They're really fun to train. They're real clean, um, really social, uh, but they only live two to three years. It's really sad. But they're so smart. They are smart. Some people, or I don't know if it's one guy, but how many species of rats are there? I don't know the answer to that question. I feel like there's a lot. Like a lot. Which pets live the longest? Tortoises or parrots? Tortoises, probably. How many pet rats have you had? Probably like six to ten in my lifetime. I don't remember. I've had pet rats since I was a kid. I had three in college. Do you present birds on Animal Quest? I have done Animal Quest on birds if you want to see them. I did all four of our parrots. I also did a crow Animal Quest and I did an emu Animal Quest. We got quite a variety of birds for you to go check out. Um, you can see them on the website. Nothing. 
All right, we'll see if I have sound, but you have sound, and that's what's important. Okay, moving on. So, look, I took that picture of chips. Can we? Can you zoom the camera out? There's got to be a way for it to be like in the corner and so they can see the table. Um, look, it's chips. Um, great. Little nose, little nose. Wild diet. Let's see everything. <gasps> there were these were supposed to animate in. Anyway, they eat veggies and fruits and seeds and trash and leftovers <laughs> and everything. Rats are omnivores, but they're primarily they primarily eat plants um, and fruits and stuff like that. But they will eat everything. Someone asked what the difference is between rats and mice. Dang it. Okay, um, the major difference is size. So rats are 15 to 18 and a half inches long. Mice are only one to seven inches long. Um, I mean, just like, this is not proportional, but like my pet mouse, he's like this, that long. The biggest rat I've ever seen, like the ones we feed noodle, I'm serious, are like, right? You think that's accurate? Or they're like this long. The rats we feed noodle are like that long. <laughs> so the, the size difference is crazy. Um, the rats are just much bigger. Um, rats weigh... 14 to 24 ounces, mice weigh less than an ounce. Rats have a hairless tail and mice have a hairy tail. They have a really thin tail with hair on it and it's like usually the same color as their body. Rats tails are pinker, more pink. All right, that's the difference between rats and mice. Also, rats can make very cool pets and they're very, very smart. We're gonna talk about more misconceptions later on, um, but rats are really cool and I wanna show you guys how cool they are. Uh, I found this YouTube channel forever ago, um, and we're just going to watch a cute little compilation. Because one of the things with rats, they're very similar to our cockroach ambassadors in that a lot of the education that we do here is just changing people's minds about them or teaching people about why they're cool. And I think this video is like a really good example of how cool they are. This is Shadow the Rat. It's not... This is not the start of the video. I don't have sound, so best of luck. Fetch. Basketball. They can learn tricks? Oh yeah. Identifying colors. Kayla has been teaching them um, to identify smells. How can it see colors? Animals don't see in black and white. <laughs> Oops, some people think that. Uh, they may see in a different color spectrum than we do, but they do see color. Look at, whoa. Stacking rings. Whoa. Actual genius. <laughs> Untie shoe. <laughs> Saved. <laughs> Scent training. This bit's cool. Is what Kayla's been doing. Oh. 
That was a little rigged. Oh my god, a piggy bank? Are you kidding me? He's rich. <laughs> oh my god. He's amazing. Pick a side. Ah, oh, it's amazing. No way. No way. Goal. Bang, ding! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> what is that brush? Somebody find it. <laughs> we need these for our rats. You know what? That's a go-go squeeze cat. There's a go-go squeeze cap and a nail polish brush. She made that. She's a genius. Oh my god, he's a thief. Oh! <laughs> wow. Oh, incredible. What do you guys think? Are you surprised? Or have you guys seen those videos before? Great video. Oh, amazing. They're amazing. Can you guys come out? You seeping? Chips has not come out yet. Chips. Chips. I have treats. Pretty cool. I had no idea they could do tasks task like that. That was next level. Yeah, rats are very, very cool. Um... Chips is in here somewhere. We will see. Um, so, they're very smart. I wanted to show you guys that um, to show you what they are capable of. Now, let's talk about the history of rats and humans because the reason that that video surprises us is because we have a pretty deep history with rats um, and we have a lot of feelings about them. Um, yes, rats. This is Pizza Rat. Uh, mutuals, thank you. They, uh, they occupy urban spaces. They love cities. You guys have ever been to the Black Plague? Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Uh, yeah, they love, they love cities because they're super opportunistic and they can eat everything. And humans are really gross. <laughs> and so wherever there are humans, there's trash and there's waste because we suck. So they take advantage of that. Um, but that can be a problem for humans because... Rats are capable of spreading um, illnesses to humans. There's two different ways that we can get illnesses from rats. There is directly by them biting, scratching saliva, urine, feces, consuming any of that. Um, that's also like if there's, it's not like you take a piece of poop and eat it. Nobody's doing that. Like if our food sources, like where they produce the food, like if rats have peed on any of those items, that kind of thing. Um, so we can get illnesses directly from rats. We can also get illnesses indirectly because rats can be a vector for other things that cause disease. How many of you think that rats cause the Black Plague? Raise your hands. Anybody ever heard of that? A lot of people saying nopers because you watch Kayla. <laughs> I found the Kayla viewers. I did. Yes, yes. It was it quick. Right. Yes. So it was the fleas. Exactly. It was not rats that caused the Black Plague. They were vectors for fleas that caused the Black Plague. The Black Plague 
Um, in killed a third of Europe's population. It killed 25 million people. 25 million people? Um, but, a, a tragedy, obviously. But the rats were framed. Because it wasn't the rats. It was the fleas. But directly, uh, rats can spread salmonella. They can spread E. coli. They can spread lepto. They can spread rat bite fever. Indirectly, with the fleas, the bubonic plague, black plague, um, and tick fever are things that they can help spread, or that they help spread. So it's kind of similar to cockroaches. It's they, they go into dirty places, they may collect bacteria, they do go into sewers and stuff like that, collect bacteria uh, that can make us sick and bring it back up to the surface. And because it doesn't affect the rats, they just go on and and spread it. Um, so that's how we get diseases from rats. There are also rat allergies, just like there are cockroach allergies. Some people are allergic uh, to them, and so there's like there's that too. But it's not a. Why is she saying it like plague? Plague? Is that better? Does it matter? Those are so similar to me. Anyway, um, so that is how rats can spread disease. However, like I said, there are a lot of misconceptions about rats. I don't know what that animation is. I thought it was funny, so I put it in there. Um, number one, rats cause the plague. Eh, wrong. Fleas cause the plague. Okay. Two, rats are yucky and smelly. They're actually not. Um, they're very clean. Uh, they groom themselves and each other, like, all day. They do a lot of preening throughout the day. Um, so they're very clean animals which is cool, and they're not yucky, they're cute. Um, rats can chew through steel. I don't know if any of you thought that, but I was looking online for misconceptions, and a lot of people think that rats can chew through stainless steel. They can't. Um, they, their teeth are very strong, and they're constantly growing, and they, they have to chew things uh, to run their teeth down, um, but they can't chew through steel. They can chew through, like, a lot of other things, wood, drywall, um, you know, wh whatever, but not steel. Uh, so <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, one of the other ones that rats aren't smart or that they, you know, that they're just like brainless, obviously, because we watched that video. They're very smart. They're very capable, um, which is really cool. Uh, and then the other one that rats might, rats live a long time or rats live like seven years or something. Uh, they only live two to three years, which is very sad. Can rats chew through cages? They don't. Sh they can't chew through the bars of the cages. I actually don't know what the rat cage is made of. Connor, do you know? Is it aluminum? No. I don't know. Aluminum? They can't chew through those bars. All oh, right. Risks to rats. We have a couple things. Oh, look, he's really sad and scared. Oh no. Um, number one, rodenticides. Biomagnification, ever heard of it? You guys ever heard me talk about this? You know how this works? You know how this works? Here's what happens when you use rat poison, okay? Rat eats rat poison. Bird eats rat with rat poison. Bigger bird eats bird with rat poison, and they all die. You know what I mean? So biomagnification is, is it poisons the food chain. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with pesticide use. So if you go and use a pesticide to get rid of some flies or something, okay, and then a bluegill, a fish, comes in and eats a bunch of those flies, then the concentration increases because they ate a bunch of those flies, right? So then there's a bunch in the bluegill, all right? Then you have a big fish, like a bass, come in and eat two bluegills. So then the concentration's even higher in this, in this bass, right? This bigger fish. And then you have a human hunt the fish, fish the fish, eat it, and then you ingest like a bunch of pesticides. It, it, increases the concentration as it goes up the food chain. That's what biomagnification is. Bioaccumulation um, is within one individual. So that would be like a bluegill eating a bunch of pesticide-affected flies over its life. That's bioaccumulation in, in one fish. Um, 
But yeah, that's what biomagnification is. We're gonna talk a little bit about some alternatives uh, for rodenticides because the rat poison rodenticides is what starts this chain. For other animals, you might be thinking that you're just, just affecting rats and the stuff that you don't want around your house, but you're actually also killing owls. How do you feel about that? It's not what you want. Um, Connor is gonna tell you guys a little bit more about how rodenticides work He's our resident, uh, you can use this one. He's our resident rodenticide expert. He's back. Hello, chat. Back just in time. Got in at 3 a.m. Ready to talk to you guys. Uh, real quick, uh, to give you some context of, of how much rodenticides, uh, poisonings I've dealt with. I was a vet tech for five years. I'm a certified wildlife rehabilitator in Georgia and did a lot of bird of prey rehab uh, at the American Eagle Foundation where there was lots of rodenticide poisonings, sadly. And some of the nests that I work or have my cams on with window to wildlife um, get affected by rodenticides quite often. And we have an emergency plan in place for these. And through these poisonings, we've gotten better understanding of how it works in birds of prey and it's weird. But first, um, what rodenticides are, the most common one is a anticoagulant, anticoagulant, thank you. Um, and the long story short is this, um, it takes a few times for the rats to come back to the bait for them to eventually have enough in them to, to die. Uh, but it removes vitamin K from, uh, oh, look at you guys, it removes vitamin K from the body or like keeps it from binding in the liver to create um, clotting factors. So platelets, stuff like that. Um, we're not gonna go into all that, but um, it just makes it to where they can't clot anymore and they'll spontaneously start bleeding. So in their guts, out their mouths, in their lungs, just bleeding and they can't clot and they slowly die. That's the problem, they slowly die. A lot of times they go out to water sources because they need to replace all the liquid that they're losing and they'll be drinking. And they're just such, they're so slow, they're lethargic. They're easy prey for hawks, owls, for the larger rats, eagles, stuff like that. I mean, if the, a, a bird of prey or a predator is not gonna pass up an easy meal um, at all because they have to spend less energy to get it. So that's where it starts happening. And the thing is like, um, if an eagle catches like one rat, it can be enough to cause some issues, but maybe not hospitalize them or kill them. But the second or third time they eat it, they start getting weird things happening. Um, Connick uh, was one of the eagles we had uh, cams on. He started losing f primary feathers when he was not supposed to and bleeding out of his... Um, primaries are what they need to fly. Primaries are what they need to fly, yes. And started bleeding out of the, the, the feather follicles and just lethargic and uh, started having weird bruising. And the way that it's treated, dogs, cats, people, also 5,000 kids every year get poisoned by rodenticides by just eating it because they think it's yummy. Oh, five people have to eat it. That's crazy. It's green. It's like bright green and That's Yeah, so what you have to do is you have to, yeah, give vitamin K, exactly. Yep, you give vitamin K, you give fluids supporting their, or su supporting fluids to hopefully flush out the rodenticides and that vitamin K replaces what the rodenticides has taken out and you hope that they survive. There are no tests to determine if a animal has rodenticide poisoning unless they biopsy the liver, which most of the time happens when the animal is dead. So there's no good way. So you can only assume if an animal or a person, if they can't talk like a child, an infant, uh, if they got into rodenticides. It's nasty. Boss, one thing I forgot to tell you for your alternatives is something called a good nature trap. I can, it's like the mouse trap, but it's better. I can show space and he can pull it up. Yeah, or it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Wow. Okay, now you know. That's a terrible way to go, huh? Also, I, I, I wasn't muted. I didn't have a mic on. Um, yeah, it's a terrible way to die. Um, I said when I was little, 
I wanted to eat rat poison because it was green and squishy. But it's not relevant to this educational presentation. That's all that I said when I didn't have the mic on. Um, so that is uh, the that's the trouble with rodenticides. Uh, it's a really terrible way to die, and then it goes on and affects more layers of wildlife. It doesn't go away. It's it's not something that that breaks down in the rat system. That's the point, right? It's it's there to to be there and kill them. And so when birds eat it, it is, it is still there. And so you are feeding rat poison to eagles, to owls, to crows, whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really terrible, um, oh yeah, there's, there's some rat bait pellets. See, look, those are, that's not the one that my, my mom used to use, uh, rat poison. It didn't look like that, but that one is also green. So... The other reason that we have these rats is to talk about outdoor cats. Wham. Outdoor cats and wildlife. You guys, I took a couple headlines um, about outdoor cats and wildlife because I thought that they, that they showed what a big deal it is. One is from the American Bird Conservancy. Single outdoor cats, colon, single greatest source of human cause mortality for birds and mammals. Can you guys, like, grasp what that is saying? The single greatest source of human-caused mortality for birds and mammals. It's more than roadkill. It's more than hunting. It's more, th it's more than everything. <laughs> single greatest source. Um, outdoor cats are a huge problem for wildlife, both mammals and birds. Um, one of the world's... Uh, uh, this one's from the IUCN. International Union for Conservation of Nature, every time you hear, like, this animal's endangered, it's because the IUCN said it was. This animal's vulnerable, not least concern, not extinct, whatever. All of those are labels that are created by the IUCN, so big organization. Um, classified outdoor cats as one of the world's worst non-native invasive species. There are a lot of invasive species. <laughs> around the world that have caused a lot of problems for a lot of animals but outdoor cats being one of the world's worst invasive species is crazy um but also not crazy because you think about it and you're like they're not an invasive species it's a cat but it totally is i mean we're just introducing this predator to all of these spaces um and they kill a ton of animals 29 percent of the over 8 million pet cats in the u.s have outdoor access. So there are a ton of them out there and they kill a lot. How many birds do outdoor cats kill per year? What do you think? You gotta make your guesses, A, B, C, or D. Do they kill 10 million birds a year, 52 million birds a year, 1 billion birds a year, or 4 billion birds a year? Mine kills lizards, they will also kill it, they'll kill everything. They actually don't kill rats as much as people think. People get outdoor cats because they're like, we have too many rats. Like, I need a barn cat. My mom, very guilty of that. She's like, I need a barn cat. I don't want rats in my barn. Um, they don't really go for rats. They're too big. They kill birds. <laughs> um, and they kill lizards and mice, stuff like that. Uh, okay, we got 42% of people think it's 52 million birds a year. 34% think it's 1 billion birds per, per year. All right. Most of you think it's 52 million birds a year. It's not. It's 4 billion birds a year. And th these numbers range, you guys, okay? They don't how many birds because there's not someone assigned to each outdoor cat in the u.s counting how many animals they kill it's an estimation and the estimation what i was looking throughout online the lowest number i could find was 2.2 billion the highest number i could find was 22 billion so it's at least 4 billion birds a year it probably is more <laughs> um, but it's a ton of birds it gets crazier, you guys. How many mammals do outdoor cats kill per year? This is, again, at least. 
Do you think it's 10 million mammals per year? 22 million, 22 billion, or 54 billion mammals? Lots of people saying C. Ten million, twenty two million, twenty two billion, fifty four billion. All right. Fifty percent said C, twenty two billion. You're genius. Twenty two billion mammals. Are there even that many animals out there in the world, Sar? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. There are a lot of animals. Um, yeah, so they kill a ton of mammals per year. Interesting about outdoor cats, if you guys have had an outdoor cat or your neighbors have a cat, there's always, there's cats everywhere, right? There's just cats everywhere. Um, have you ever noticed cats like bring things and just leave them there? You know, like a fox, if it were to kill a rat, it's eating it, right? Um, cats aren't necessarily eating everything that they're hunting. It's, it's like recreation. They're murderers. No. <laughs> but they really, I mean, they do, they kill a lot of things that they're not eating. They're also getting supplement fed well, most of the time. A lot of people put out food for cats, stuff like that. Um, and so they just kill a ton of birds and mammals. And it's a huge problem for native bird and mammal species um also cats actually i i should have had the stats for this prepped but i don't do you know cats can have like can't they have like 10 kittens at a time and then sexual maturity is at what a few months four five four, four months six months okay two or three liters a year guys let's do something crazy At four months, they reach sexual maturity. Meow, meow, meow. This is a cat, okay? This is one cat. This is one outdoor cat, all right? Say your friend got a cat and they're like, oh, he likes outside. I'm gonna let him outside. I'm not gonna spay and neuter him though. I'm just gonna let him go. <laughs> oh God, a boyfriend. They're in love. She met another not spayed or neutered cat and they bred. So she had 12 babies. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. These are all her babies. These are all her kittens, okay? I did, I fostered a cat once that had 11 kittens. All right, it's not that crazy to think about. New family. Four, in four months, each of these babies can have 12 more babies <laughs> in just four months after they're born. You can let the, what's the gestation period of a cat? Stand by. 65 days. You let this cat out two months. In two months, she meets this, she meets this lover immediately, okay? And then in two months, she has 12 babies. Then four months after that, all of these babies, <laughs> that is just one of them that has had another 10 babies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are all babies and not even close to how many babies are coming from these babies, right? Because they can each have, each have 10 babies. I need 120 lines. Then all of these babies in another four months, they can have another 10 babies each in another four months. Also, this cat up here, she can do this three times a year. Three times, this can happen three times a year. This is not a one-time thing, people. Three times a year. <laughs> it's like 1,200 new cats <laughs> from one cat <laughs> that you let out. This is not okay. My calculator broke. Infinite cats. Infinite cat glitch. You understand the problem? Oh my god. Is that a rat? <laughs> I was asking a lot of this dry erase marker. 
So anyway, um, this is how outdoor cats work. This is why we have so many, and this is why they're able to kill so many. Um, let's go talk about our recommendations then. The first one I'm going to put in here, and I meant to add it this morning, and I'm just now remembering that I did not, is uh, if you have outdoor cats, or if you know of outdoor cats, spay and neuter them. They need to be spayed and neutered, <laughs> okay? That's a big, because here's the thing about about this, right? About this beautiful, lovely chart that I showed y'all. If, uh, if, thi if this cat was spayed, even just this one, if before they let this cat outside, it, they spayed it, It's just two cats. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's a lot less babies. So, uh, TNR, trap, neuter, release. It's, it's, very, it's very popular. People talk about it a lot. It's important. It, it's a big deal. Okay? Um, so, if you have an outdoor cat, spay and neuter that cat, please, for the love of God. If you find kittens outside, spay, neuter. Okay? Um, for rats, though, recommendations overall, keep your spaces clean and your food and water enclosed. Okay, this is just like the cockroach conversation, right? Um, rats are there because rats are opportunistic and they eat trash and they eat leftovers and they eat whatever, um, whatever you leave out. So you got to keep your stuff clean. You guys want to come out? They don't want to come out. They just like it in there. You can look at them like this. <laughs> um, keep your spaces clean and you will have you will not have a rat problem. Keep your spaces sealed and you will not have a rat problem. Your house has got to be sealed up, you know what I mean? Um, try alternatives to rodenticides. I looked up a couple alternatives. There are lots online, though. You can look up all like natural alternatives to rat poison, and there are a bunch of them. One of them is cayenne pepper. I've never tried that a shot it's a, you know it's cheap it's like easy enough sprinkle it out there see what it does i don't know um but cayenne pepper is is one electric traps gas traps are another um my mom now uses electric traps she still wants to kill rats but she does not i will not let her <laughs> use rat poison um anymore and so she uses electric traps they're like they're small they're like this big um and I actually think that they're pretty humane. I mean, rats go in there to eat something, and they just get zapped, or they die immediately. Um, and they work really well. So she's been using those for years. Um, rodent strobe lights, I looked up. Haven't done a lot of research on that. But strobe lights will keep them away because they don't like it. Botanical repellents. Connor's got one, too. Nature. Good nature. Okay, sorry, I didn't tell you about this. I should have. Um, I've tested this extensively, and oh, once space has it pulled up, we'll be good. Uh, long story short, this trap came out from New Zealand for uh, deploying. Uh, came out of New Zealand, and uh, they were deployed in the rainforest where they couldn't put out rodenticides. Um, and they needed to control the rat population, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, this is a CO2 powered um, rat trap that can, you can set it and forget it. And it lasts for like 30 shots. Um, and what the rat does is it goes up into the, the trap and it goes for a little bit of peanut butter. And it has a little, um, it's called a bolt capture. It just instantly headshots them and they die. And then they fall out, and then predators can come pick up a free meal that's not uh, that does not have um, poison in it. And they're really cool. The, do you have the other picture space you could show? Yeah, so that's that's what it looks like. Um, it's a little expensive. I think they're like two hundred bucks, but uh, I've used this to just set it, and forget it, and it really it works really well. With the electric tra traps, you have to go and, like, take them out and get rid of the dead rats. But, um, I guess, yeah. 
that's awful. Why would you promote this? Um, I'm not like promoting <laughs> that everyone goes out there and you know, let's everybody, let's go kill rats for no reason. These are alternatives to using rodenticides because rodenticides uh, r negatively affect wildlife. Uh, some people, it's not safe to have rodents in their home um, because they can spread disease, absolutely. And there are ways to get rid of rodents that are much more humane than others and much safer for other wildlife than others. That um, is one of those methods. So that's why we're talking about it. Um, speaking of humane, a rodent, an alternative to rodenticide that I do not recommend and do not condone is glue traps. Please don't use glue traps. If you have glue traps out, go get them. I have worked in wildlife rehab for a couple years. Uh, I've gotten a lot of animals off of glue traps and it is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Glue traps are literally a trap with glue on it and they're very sticky and animals walk up there and they get stuck and they slowly die or they try really hard to get out to where they're degloving themselves because their fur is stuck to the to the glue or these birds are ripping their feathers out because they're stuck to the glue i've done several birds with glue traps finches it is so sad it is so hard to get them out we have to they have to be in rehab center if they live that long which most of the time they just dehydrate and die on the glue trap or they starve on the glue trap but if we get to them soon enough, we take them and try to get them off the glue trap and then they have to stay at the rehab center for months when they get an entirely new set of feathers because their feathers are irreversibly damaged. Um, do not use glue traps. They're a terrible way to die um, for all wildlife. And it's not just rats that you get. There's also snakes on glue traps, birds on glue traps. It's just like awful. So don't use glue traps. Um, support native raptor populations. Uh, if you want some natural biological pest control that does not damage the environment, we have that. <laughs> Birds of prey, anybody? We have those, okay? Owl boxes can be very cool. Uh, you can find a local wildlife rehab center that'll probably help you get set up with an owl box. Um, you can look at National Wildlife Federation, nwf.org, I think, or maybe there's nationalwildlifefederation.org. I'm not sure. Um, but you can get an owl box. Very cool. Um, protect natural spaces for birds of prey because that will help with rat populations. Talk to people about outdoor cats and rodenticide use. People need to know about the kind of damage that cats do to wildlife. Um, and people need to know about rodenticide use and why that's bad. Um, and then I think I've already said this a bunch of times, but if you're gonna have outdoor cats, or if you know people with outdoor cats, or if you know of outdoor cats, spaying and neutering them is so important. If you if you want something, I know it's like not an easy task, but if you want something that is like a really powerful, like I made a difference for this, if you wanna save like hundreds of birds, go trap a cat and get it spayed or neutered because <laughs> of this whole thing that we did. Right? It is literally saving birds. Um, so it's very important. There are a lot of uh, animal shelters that have uh, TNR programs that you can help with. People set out traps um, for, for cats. Uh, and there, there are people that can help you with that. You can volunteer to help with that. So that's important. And then teach people that rats are cute and cool. We like rats. Rats make great pets. These domestic rats make great pets. Don't go catch a rat. It's not your pet. Um, that's not how it works. But these ones are great. <laughs> they're very fun. They're very smart. They're clean. Um, not quite like I can't. I'm going to be honest. I can't use the detritivore argument where it's like you can't get mad at a firefighter because uh, it's not. I mean, I, they're not cleaning up and recycling in the same way. They are seed dispersers. So they will eat things and go around and drop pellets everywhere. And that helps with regrowth. Absolutely. Uh, that's very important. But it's really just that they're they're opportunistic and they do really well um, eating whatever they can find. And so, if anything, it's our fault that they're there. If you don't like them, you know they're just living like they're surviving. Uh, if they're in urban spaces, so yeah. Oh. And that is all I have for you. Where would you recommend getting pet rats if? Oof. That's a good question. We can go into the Q&A now. Um, I think that is all. 
Yeah, that is it. That's all I have for you. Uh, the pet rat one is interesting because what I know for sure is I don't want you to buy one from Petco or PetSmart or like a pet store. Like don't go to a chain pet store to buy one of them. Um, there are rat rescues. Rat rescues are kind of hard though because they only live two to three years. So if you get a rat that's like a year and a half old and like the adoption process takes a month, like you might have it for like five months or something, which would be sad, but that's an option, totally an option. Um, all the rats that I've, see, I'm in like a weird, unique position where I've just like worked at zoos or like have known snake breeders. All the pet rats that I've ever had were going to be feeders. And so I was just like, can I take it? And they're like, yeah. Animal shelters have some rats. Yeah, check those out. Yeah, just don't buy any pets from Petco. <laughs> All right. Let's look at some of the some of the questions. Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, you can do hashtag ask, followed by your question. Where's the fucking mouse? Do you know where the screen is? Oh. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, are there any rats that should not be a pet? So don't go catch wild rats. Uh, one, it's dangerous for your health. Uh, and two, they wouldn't like it. Um, but there's also, there are some rats, like we've looked into Gambian pouched rats. Um, those are like huge, those are the bomb sniffing rats. Uh, and you have to have very special permits to have them in the US because they have such a high potential to become invasive. So those are not pets in the US anyway, either really, I mean you can, but it's like this whole, this whole process. Can you put it back on the screen? I don't know why it went over there. The mouse. Thank you. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Um. The lifespan of this breed of rats is two to three years. It's very short. Um. Nope. Oh, sorry. Ooh, what are their favorite treats? They like apple. Um, they like they get rat pellets. They like those. They like Cheerios. They like lots of things. Mm. Are there tails for balance? I yes. I think so. I mean, I haven't read that anywhere, but that's what I would assume. They're very good at climbing things, and they definitely use their tail to balance themselves out. Their tails are pretty heavy. Can rats hiss? Not that I know of. I've never heard a rat hiss. Do they form bonds with each other? Yeah, they're very social. Uh, so you can never have one rat. You definitely d need to have multiple because... Uh, they do bond with each other, and they are very social, and they like hanging out with each other. So, um, they do sleep. These two cuddle up together and go to sleep. It's really cute. Do 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 da do da. They are staying in this, whoa, I, this one. They are staying in the crate because they feel really safe in there. Kayla and Ella have done an excellent job making the crate a good thing for them. <laughs> and so they're like, ow, I like it in here. Connor took their blanket out though. Not freaked up. Here you go. Thank it for you. So yeah, they're in there because they feel safer and because there's cover. That's why we have the hides um, on the table. How 
How can they tell that there's a difference between scents? I don't know how to answer this question biologically or mechanically, but it's just like we do. And dogs. Like, they, they have a, a really good sense of smell. So they can just smell different things. I don't know <laughs> how to answer that. Um, I think that they make pretty excellent pets. Yeah. Um, domestic rats make excellent pets. They're very fun to train. They're very fun to hang out with. Uh, thank you for the 10. Thank you so much. Um, you don't need a ton. They Our rats have a lot of space, and they will use as much space as you can provide to them. Um, but it's it's not like you need, like, a a yard like a dog you know or, or whatever um <laughs> this one i don't know how to answer this question what's your opinion What's the best way to deal with neighbors who keep trash all over their backyard and have rats which travel over into your yard? Depends on the neighbor, I guess. I like if it was me, like I would text them. <laughs> I'd be like, "Hey, like there are rats. <laughs> Can you fix?" I don't know. I'm scared for you. I don't want to give you advice. Oh, you can call the city, or you if you have an HOA. Yeah, you will. You, I don't think they have an HOA if there's trash all over the backyard. You could try to call the city. I don't got my neighbor's number. Oh. It's like that, huh? <laughs> oh, not to have, like, an extremist take, but, like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I think they should. I don't, like, there, there are other methods um that some that are more effective and these are just so bad for all wildlife and it never goes away like yes i don't see a reason why we should still use rodenticides rat poison <laughs> this is a this is a fair question um, is it a skill that Why don't the birds fly away? So, uh, yes, they do kill adult birds because cats are very, very fast and can jump very high, and they're very good at hunting. However, cats uh, predate on nests. Um, so cats will go into bird nests, and they'll take nestlings, and fledglings are when a bird is in a nest right before they jump, and they go beep, 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 and they try to fly away, right? Uh, nestlings just got their feathers. They jump out of the nest, but they can't fly yet. And so they're on the ground for three to five days. And that is like, fledglings are like prime cat bait. So they eat fledglings. Uh, this person said, would drowning a rodent be considered humane? Like if they fell into a bucket of water. N I don't think that that's humane. There are definitely more humane ways to euthanize an animal. You think about it. If you're like, is this humane? Think about like your dog. If you had to euthanize your dog, how would you do it? If I had to euthanize my dog, I would probably use gas. Electrocution would be my second. Maybe. If I was like very sure. Because when you gas and they just kind of fall asleep. I would never drown my dog. You know? I'd rather drown myself. Obviously. But yeah. Um, if, if you wouldn't... Yeah. This is a really bad way to die. I, I would not recommend. How do you trap a cat without hurting it? There are live traps. I don't know that... I, I wouldn't recommend you guys going out and trying to do this by yourself. Because it could be dangerous and you could get cut by the cat. You could get fever and whatever. Um... There are live traps, though, that you can put out. You can put cat food in them, like wet cat food, and cats will go in there, and you just trap the whole cat live, take them in, they knock them out, and then neuter them. But you should do it with an organization that can train you on how to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Ruh row. Here it comes. Why is it bad to buy from Petco? I'm not going to call out Petco in particular. I think most large chain pet stores shouldn't sell pets um, because they don't train their employees as keepers. They train their employees as retail employees. Um, and so a lot of times that ends up looking like their reptiles don't have high enough humidity. Their fish don't have the right pH. They don't have enough water. They don't have the right food. They don't have safe toys, whatever. Um, it's just they, the animals in chain pet stores that are sold are sold like commodities and not like animals. Um, and so I just, it's just, I don't know. It's just not, it's just not an ideal way to buy a pet. And then some, a lot of similar questions about Petco. Uh, they don't capture wild rats. That's not the problem. Um, that's not the problem. It's just the, the, the welfare. You have a pet rat that doesn't like being picked up. Any tips for the times I have to pick them up? Kayla and Ella have trained Scoop with these two. So you have your hand out and you have a treat here and you say Scoop and then they like put their front feet up here to get the treat. And then you just like make your hand a little higher and you say Scoop and they have to like jump in your hand. And so eventually you can just be like, and they'll like jump in your hand and you can move them instead of having to like grab. This is very predatory. It's literally how birds kill rats, right? Like, <laughs> so if you go and like pick them up like that, they're going to hate it. Um, but if they can choose to jump into it, it's just a lot safer feel, you know what I mean? Will letting my cat out while being while observed be all right? It's certainly better than letting them out without supervision, um, but the most ideal if you want your cat to have outdoor time is a catio. Something that's fenced it also keeps your cat safe. Guys, I didn't talk about like cats die too you know like coyotes will eat cats um stray dogs will eat cats uh whatever it's it's pretty dangerous for cats to be outside especially young ones um and so if you have like a catio and it's it's fenced in then they can still have outside space um but be safe and then all the other wildlife can be safe yeah getting hit by cars is a huge one yeah Yeah, a lot of questions about Petco. I'm surprised that surprised people. I thought I thought most people were on the same page about like buying pets from pet stores now. People don't know. Okay. Let's walk through this question together because I don't know how to answer it myself. Um, do you have any recommendations on how to tell someone you know who has an outdoor cat that they should keep them inside without being rude? I'm not going to answer this question. I'm going to tell you anecdotally about my experience with this, okay? Um, I My mom has barn cats, okay? There's an outdoor cat. You guys met him. His name's Hansel. He's, like, always lived outside. I told my mom one day, I was like, Mom, Hansel's got Hansel's to move inside. Because I, I had learned about what they did to wildlife, and I was like, he's got to go. Like, he can't be outside anymore. So she brought him inside for one night, and he marked everything in the house. Everything in the house. And uh, she was like, wait, wait, wait. like, he's not supposed to be inside. Like, he's an outdoor cat. Like, he doesn't know how to use a litter box or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm going to be honest. This is my bad. I totally get it. Like, you can't just yoink a cat and put it inside and, like, problem solved. It's not always that simple. And so my mom was like, Hansel's old as hell he's old i forget how old he is but he's like i'm shocked he's still alive um and she's like he'll just be outside until he's dead and that'll be it and then she got two more freaking barn cats 
She had two more cats because she was like, I don't want to have rats in my barn. And I was like, dude, <laughs> not chill. I was like, that's super, that's not super chill. Um, and I've actually had arguments with my mom over it because she's so, she grew up having barn cats. She grew up having cats that like kept rodents out of the barn. And she thinks it's a necessity. She's like, if I don't have barn cats, I'm going to have rats everywhere. I don't really know how to have that conversation besides telling them like what they do to out. I've even sent my mom articles about how many birds they kill. She doesn't care or she does care, but she's just like, eh, you know, like some people are just really stuck in their ways about it. Um, so I don't really know I, if you guys have ideas. I'm genuinely, this is like a discussion. I genuinely am not really sure. I don't think that you should go up to someone and be like, Hey, bring your cat inside. It's killing wildlife. That will not work. That will not work. Um, you can ask if they're spayed or neutered. Yeah. If you want to be real passive, you can be like, has your cat ever had kittens being outside? And then they'd, they'd be like, oh, no, she's spayed. And you'd be like, oh, saved. Walk away. Walk away. Educate the young. We can fix the problem in one generation. Whoa chatter whoa what an idea honestly um you know if none of you after watching this presentation are willing to to put a cat outside like a new cat almost four thousand of them <laughs> that's a lot of cats right that's big that's big Imagine you text your neighbor randomly, hey, is your cat neutered? I think you got to ease into it better than that. I don't think you should do it like that. Oh, you know what? You could you could lie. <laughs> you could be like, hey, I know you have this cat. I heard, I thought I heard kittens under this house the other day. I just want to make sure they're not your cats. And then they're like, oh, no, they're not her. She's spayed. Saved. Or if they're like, oh, no. And then... You could be like, oh my god, I went back and checked and they're all dead. You should probably get her spayed so that doesn't happen again. All these kittens are dead. <laughs> and then, problem solved, then they get their cat spayed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do the, there's a ton of strays. I'm trying to figure out which ones are yours so I don't trap them. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. If you're like, hey, I'm, I'm trapping cats uh, to get them spayed and neutered. I just want to make sure I don't trap yours unless you want me to get it spayed and neutered because like, you know, we're trying to help with cat populations because like birds, whatever. That's a, that's a move. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I kind of think they do. Like Chips definitely responds. When you go Chips, Chips, she definitely responds. Are feeder rats socialized differently than pet rats? They're not socialized um, because they're just... out of there. So yeah, I guess they're socialized differently because they're not. Um, all right. Okay. And then a couple of people have asked, uh, like what rodent pet I would recommend the most. They're moving the cage. Um, it's, Oh, okay. It's a tough one. Because it's a tie between two. If you want a rodent and you want a pet, it's a tie between two for me. It's a rat or a guinea pig. Guinea pigs are really fun because they're big and they love produce. And my favorite thing about having guinea pigs was when you brought them produce, they'd go, meep, meep, meep. 
It was really cute, right? And uh, I loved it, and it makes him really happy every day. And I had one that liked being pet. The rest didn't, and they didn't like getting picked up. I will say I used to pick them up as a child, and they didn't like it. Um, but they're really cute. I just think they're really cute, and they don't smell, and they don't bite. I've never had a guinea pig bite me in my life, which is sick. Rats, I've had rats bite me. Um, not these ones. They're way easier to train. I would not try to train a guinea pig. I'm going to be, I'm sure you could. I've never tried and it would be way harder than rats to train. So rats are more fun to train. You need multiple of both. Guinea pigs live longer, take up more space. Rats only live two years, two to three years. So like that's kind of depressing if you really get attached to your pet. That's my two cents. Don't get a hamster. Don't do Hamsters are so freaking overrated, man. Look, if you have a hamster and you love it, I'm so happy for you. But they're nocturnal, and they bite, and they're really hard to handle. There's nothing to hold on to, okay? They hide. They just burrow. You don't see them all day. Like, they're just, they're just not, I would not recommend them as pets, and I cannot for the life of me understand why parents get their kids a hamster every time as the first pet. It is like the worst first pet ever. You can't interact with them. They're nocturnal, and they bite you. And they just hide all day. You don't see them. All they do is run on the wheel at night and they wake you up. But Daily Dose has a hamster. He loves it. So, like, that's great. My hamster had a kid and ate it. Yeah, they do that, too. I mean, if you have a pregnant hamster, hamster for some reason, they will eat their babies, which, not that that really has anything to do with them being a bad pet, but... Just not my favorite. Chinchillas are a lot more work. They're much bigger. They need a lot more vertical space. They're not easy to handle either. They're fun to train. I had a hamster. It was pregnant. It had six babies. I went to school and there was one left when I came home. Damn. Anyway, um, any other last minute questions? That's going to be it for us, folks. That's going to be it for us. Is there a way to test wild rats for rodenticide? No. No. Also, they, I think it hits them pretty quick. I think they die pretty quick after they consume it, so there wouldn't really be a point. Why is their tail so weird? It helps them balance. I don't know why it's hairless. I will tell Vanilla and Chips Ahoy that you love them. How do I tell my husband to knock it off with the pesticides? Say, hey, asshole, knock it off. Can a rat move faster than a cat? Yes. No. In distance, absolutely not. In zero to 100, <laughs> they don't go 100 miles an hour. In like acceleration, yes. Right? No. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Cats are really fast. Rats can only go eight miles an hour. Cats can go 30. But what about, like, the initial acceleration? Rats are more agile. Can, and they can climb more surface. You know what? Cats can climb. Rats can go on, like, thinner whatever. Like, they can go in smaller spaces. There's a ghost. The ghost of Christmas rat. They're in here. All right, guys. 
that is going to be it for Animal Quest today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun. I know it was like the longest of Animal Quests or the most in-depth of Animal Quests. But um, there's really only two important things that I want to talk about with our rat ambassadors. And it's... Oh, sorry, rats. It's... <laughs> they're right here. <laughs> I could like feel them through the blanket. It's outdoor cats and rodenticides. And I think we talked about that a lot. I'm sorry about the mic cutting out. Not sure what that's been about today. Um, but yeah, thank you for the subs. Thank you for the prime. Uber noob, thank you for the Twitch prime. Uh, Bogan, thank you. Brandon, thank you for the five. No, ten. Wow. Thank you so much for the ten. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate the subs. I appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you guys on Saturday. Normally, I would see you Friday for, um, normally I'd see you Friday for keeping but i'm leaving i'm going to new york because on the first we are doing oh my god sorry we're doing conservation uncharted um it is at 11 30 a.m central so 12 30 p.m uh eastern we are going to meet a wolf puppy at the Wolf Conservation Center um, on Saturday. So, and then we'll talk about wolf conservation. It'll be a good time. So, make sure you're there for that. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. Um, so, yeah. See you guys Saturday. You start the raid. You're starting the raid. Raiding into Alveus. Ready to get to Alvarez and the rats go back home. They were, you should have seen them crate this morning to come in here. I asked Ella if, if we could bring them in and she was just like, yeah. She opened the thing and held the crate up to the top level and she was like, chips. <laughs> and she like scraped the bottom of the crate and they both just ran in and she was like, here you go. <laughs> They're amazing. They're amazing. Yeah, I, I will just quick mention, I don't hate cats. I, I think I made that pretty clear. It's not the cat's fault, it's the people's fault. But we do have to do something about it. Alrighty. See you guys on Saturday. Thank you. Sorry, it took me that long to... Saturday.